electromyography is recording of electrical activity of muscle when action potential travels via a neuron which is supplying the muscle fibers that action potential via neuromuscular junction reaches to the muscle fibers and this leads to action potential in the muscle fibers and only after action potential there is a release of the calcium and then there is contraction of the muscle in electromyography we are interested in electrical activity of the muscle that is the action potential in the muscle fibers now there are so many muscle fibers in one muscle how many muscle fibers contract with one action potential of a neuron see the number of the muscle fibers supplied by one alpha motor neuron is known as a motor unit so whenever this particular neuron will be stimulated all the muscle fibers which are supplied by that neuron they are going to be stimulated there will be action potential in all those muscle fibers so the electrical activity which we record that is known as motor unit potential that is fundamental okay this we have seen in nerve conduction velocity as well right now there are two ways to record this electrical activity of the muscle one either we stimulate the neuron directly okay so we put electrodes on the neuron and we stimulate the neuron so that the action potential reaches to the muscle but all action potentials reach together at the same time okay so when we do that we do it by placing surface electrodes on the muscle okay so if uh, this is the hand and we are recording from the median nerve we put some surface electrodes here okay so these are round electrodes which are uh, um, placed on the area supplied by that particular nerve so these are surface electrodes on the other hand we can also place medial electrodes within the muscle and we ask the person to voluntarily contract the muscle this is not the stimulation of the nerve okay so when we ask the person to voluntarily contract the muscle that way also we can record this action potential of the muscle fibers so this one in which we are stimulating the neuron and we are placing the surface electrodes that we have already seen in the nerve conduction velocity that we measure the speed of action potential in the neuron and we also look at the motor unit potential which is being recorded in this video we will mainly concentrate on this part that is what happens how the electrical activity is recorded when we are recording with medial electrodes which are inserted within the muscle so when we are stimulating the neuron and recording the action potential within the muscle what happens that if single neuron is stimulated then all the muscle fibers which are supplied by that particular neuron they all will have electrical activity at the same time and we will get up the summed action potential of all these muscle fibers and that is known as motor unit potential if more than one neuron is stimulated okay so in a nerve there are many neurons motor neurons will be many many alpha motor neurons will be there which will supply different set of the muscle fibers in the muscle when many of them are stimulated still the action potential in the nerve will almost reach at the same time so we get the summed up activity of so many motor units okay one motor unit will be activated by this neuron another motor unit will be activated by this neuron okay so all their electrical activity is added up and what we record is compound motor unit potential so this motor unit potential which we get it is either a biphasic or triphasic response and this occurs due to the synchronous activation of the motor unit so action potential in all motor units occur at the same time and they get added up we get biphasic or triphasic response however when we are asking the person to voluntarily contract the muscle then in the electrical activity we get interference pattern what is that so initially we will not get any change in potential let me rub this okay this is little wrong so initially we will not get any change in potential like this it will be there when we have inserted the needle okay understanding when we have inserted the needle because of the needle insertion there will be some activity then there will be no electrical activity and then when we ask a person to voluntarily contract the muscle we will get something like this okay 
that is because of asynchronous activation of the motor units that means they are not getting activated at the same time so one motor unit may be activated like this other motor unit may be activated somewhere here some motor units may be activated here okay so when they add up it's like all the action potentials are not occurring together so it adds up and it is seen like this that is known as interference pattern because it is an interference in the baseline of the activity okay initially activity is silent no activity is seen and then that baseline is interrupted that is known as interference pattern so now we will see that how we record this emg with the needle electrodes and what are the different types of activity which are seen so basically we can use a unipolar also known as monopolar recording or we can use a bipolar recording in unipolar recording what happens we use two electrodes always we use two electrodes one negative and one positive but in unipolar recording one electrode is at zero potential okay one electrode is at zero potential in bipolar recording both the electrodes are on the muscle itself the recording muscle where we need both the electrodes are inserted into the muscle and uh, we will record basically the potential difference between these two electrodes here when one particular electrode is at zero potential there also potential difference is recorded but because one electrode is at zero potential what we get is actual potential actual potential at the other electrode at this electrode what is the potential because we are subtracting it from zero okay so we get the actual potential here we will get the potential difference the filter which we keep is 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay so that means this is low filter 10 hertz and this is the high filter that means any frequency which is coming in the electrodes electrodes will pick up all kind of the um, signals okay so any signal frequency which is less than 10 hertz it is rejected any signal frequency which is more than 20 kilohertz that is also rejected so only the signals which are between these frequencies they will be captured right now in EMG, we get four different types of recording, okay? These are insertional activity. When we are inserting the electrode into the muscle, then we have resting activity. Then we have single motor unit analysis. And fourth, we have motor unit recruitment, which is recorded when we ask the patient for maximum voluntary contraction, okay? Let us see each of them one by one. So first is insertional activity and it appears something like this. This appears when we are inserting the needle within the muscle. So there is brief discharge of multiple muscle fibers. That is because they are getting stimulated when we are inserting the needle. So action potentials is generated because of that stimulation and that is recorded. And this activity stops when needle movement stops. So this insertional activity is not abnormal unless the discharge continues even when the needle movement has stopped. If it is continues even after needle movement has stopped then it is abnormal. Then second is resting activity. Remember that we don't get any spontaneous electrical activity in the muscle at rest. Okay, so the muscle is silent at rest. We don't get any spontaneous electrical activity at rest because only when the neuron is stimulating the muscle, then only action potential will be generated in the muscle. So for this, it is extremely important that we ensure that the muscle is completely relaxed. Understanding? Because if the muscle is uh, stimulated, then we will get this resting activity. So we have to ensure that the muscle is completely relaxed. Sometimes it can be ensured by keeping the muscle in a certain position in which the antagonists are contracting. So the main muscle, the agonist muscle will relax because of reciprocal innovation. Right? If the antagonist muscle is contracting, then an inhibitory activity is sent to the agonist muscle okay reciprocal innovation so this ensures complete relaxation of the muscle however sometimes there can be some abnormal electrical activity recorded in resting state and these are known as fibrillation potentials positive sharp waves and fasciculation fibrillation potentials are 
action potentials of a single muscle fiber okay single muscle fiber and they are appearing something like this so here you see silent and in between there will be spontaneous electrical activity which is basically single muscle fiber action potential these are known as fibrillations these can occur in neuropathy as well as in myopathy next is positive sharp wave so something like this are seen these are known as positive sharp waves remember here though it is appearing negative this negative potential is actually known as positive sharp wave okay so when we are recording motor unit potential this is the motor unit potential which we are recording actually this positive direction wave it is known as a negative wave okay that is known as first negative wave understanding then next abnormal activity in resting activity can be fasciculation in which there is a spontaneous discharge of a single motor unit so understand the difference fibrillation is spontaneous discharge of a single muscle fiber while fasciculation is a spontaneous discharge of a single motor unit okay and this can be normal or it can occur in chronic denervation that means there is a chronic neuropathy going on in that case fasciculations can occur understanding so we have to be cautious in interpreting if there is no other abnormality then we cannot label it as chronic denervation also because it may be normal also right so three types of abnormalities can occur fibrillation positive sharp waves and fasciculations moving on to the next type of activity that is motor unit potentials of a single motor unit so in this we ask the patient to slightly contract the muscle and record the electrical activity so we record some biphasic or triphasic potential because it is a single motor unit very small muscle contraction is occurring so maybe one or two motor units are stimulated that is why we get biphasic or triphasic action potential and the amplitude of these action potential depends on the size of the motor unit that means how many muscle fibers are present in that particular motor unit and the proximity of recording electrodes to that particular muscle fibers if the electrode is little far away then maybe the amplitude which is recorded will be less isn't it see the, say suppose these are the muscle fibers and your electrode is kept here but the muscle fiber which is contracting is this one okay there will be action potential but this action potential has to reach this particular electrode then only it will be picked up so as it is reaching there will be loss of some potential okay so there will be loss of this amplitude of the potential which is recorded now if this motor unit potential the shape which is recorded is polyphasic then it is considered abnormal then moving on to the last type of activity that is the recruitment pattern so this is the interference pattern which is recorded when we ask the person to contract the muscle maximally so there will be increased motor unit contractions and all the motor unit potentials will sum up and we will get something known as the interference pattern the baseline is obliterated resting activity will be like this okay and when we ask a person to contract maximally the baseline is obliterated so that is interference pattern so that were the different types of recording which we get in electromyography now with some important aspects i will just close what are the signs of muscle reinnervation after muscle injury okay so suppose there is some injury because of which the neuron connection with the muscle is lost okay what are the signs that we can tell that yes the innervation to the muscle is again happening okay so for that we have to do serial recording of this electromyography actually both nerve conduction velocity and electromyography are done in single sitting so we record with surface electrodes also along with the nerve conduction velocity and then we record with needle electrodes also so in serial measurements if there is appearance of unstable polyphasic potentials there is decrease in number of fibrillation potentials so before there were some fibrillation potentials but over time there is decrease in number of fibrillation potentials or increase in number of motor unit potentials then that is a sign of muscle reinnervation so that were some basics about electromyography thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you